Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today I've got another non-systems question for you as we go through the FSBPT's content outline. As you recall, as we go through this, this podcast, we're going through each of the FSBPT's published content outlines. Now of note, the non-systems covers a wide variety of material, everything from equipment, devices, and technologies, through modalities, safety protection, professional responsibilities, and finally on to research and evidence-based practice. I know that research and evidence-based practice is the Achilles heel for many students, so I figured we may as well throw another question in here related to the non-systems. So that's today's question related to non-systems, research and evidence-based practice. Before we get to that, just a quick reminder, you can check out ptfinalexam.com for all of our current course offerings. I just want to mention very briefly here the VIP class. So a lot of you are considering the VIP class as you're heading into test season. Uh, we, we prepare every quarter for each administration of the NPTE. And the VIP class, this is the one that I personally run. This is where we go through numerous, numerous practice questions in a small group environment. We get everyone's questions answered about that question. And it's extremely effective, not only for the accountability that it creates because you're in a small group, you're working together with individuals on the same pathway, but it's also great because you get expert instruction, you've got a full video library, you've got six full practice exams, you get complimentary access to the crash course, all of our written material. Additionally, it, it really breaks down the study plan for you to take all of the guesswork out of your NPTE preparations. It really is the creme de la creme. This is the VIPT NPT review course. And I very much recommend that if you are at all on the fence about worrying about passing, whether you, you've got a job lined up and you've got to make it through, you'll find nothing as robust and as clear as the VIPT program. Now, sometimes you'll see in, in other courses that you'll, I guess uh, one of the, the disadvantages of other courses is you get such a large group. This is a small group. So that's the, the great part about the VIP program is that you get access directly to the instructors. You can talk, in fact, most people schedule phone calls with me. It's very much a small group, very, uh, yeah, just a very dedicated program that I think you'll find is a breath of fresh air compared to others out there. So be sure to check it out, ptfinalexam.com. You'll want to sign up for the VIP program. You get access to the VIP program for a full year. So if you are at all considering for like next summer, next spring, whatever, whenever you're taking the NPT, you'll get the most bang for your buck if you sign up early because you'll be able to take the course, essentially take it multiple times, make sure that you're not rushed right before test day. So again, check out ptfinalexam.com for all the information and to sign up for the VIPT program. All right, let's go and dive into our practice question today. Like I said, there are somewhere between three and five questions on the research and evidence-based practice portion of the exam. So definitely questions you don't want to cut loose. You want to get every question you can. All You want every, every single question to count to your benefit, certainly in the research and evidence-based practice section as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into our practice question. I'll read it to you, give you a moment to respond, and then we will talk about it together. Here we go. If a diagnostic test is known to have a positive predictive value of 20%, which of the following statements is true? So if a diagnostic test is known to have a positive predictive value of 20%, which of the following statements is true? One, 80% of positive test results are true positives. Two, 80% of negative test results are true negatives. Three, 80% of positive test results are false positives. And four, 80% of negative test results are false negatives. So a little bit of a mix and match here. We have 80% of positive are true positives, 80% of negatives are true negatives, 80% of positives are false positives, and 80% of negatives are false negatives. So you can see how it's a mix and match between the, the positive test results and false positives, and the, or sorry, yeah, positives and true positives, uh, negatives, true negatives, positives, false positives, negatives, false negatives. So again, the question is, if a diagnostic test is known to have a positive predictive value of 20%, which of the following statements is true? Well, the correct answer is that, that third option. So what it is 80% of positive test results are false positives. So taken as simply as possible, and this is maybe a little bit difficult to do in an audio format, but go with me here, that a positive predictive value is simply looking at the percentage of of positive test results that are truly po that are true positives. So you're looking at the percentage of positive test results, so they're marked positive, and then identifying, okay, 
how many of those that were tr that were marked positive are true positives so as an example let's say that that i was performing the lockman's test and i got you know i had 10 people there and i did a lockman's test and i decided that you know will crane decided that there were two out of the 10 that were positive lockman's tests and the other or sorry no i'm, I'm saying that exactly wrong <laughs> i want to make sure i say this clearly Let's say there's 10 people and I mark down all 10 people as positive, but only two were actually positive. That's what a positive predictive value of 20% means. That of the 10 people that I marked as positive, only two were true positives. So maybe, maybe I won't go back and edit it out, edit out that section where I, I started saying it incorrectly. And this is one of those things about research where you have to make sure that you've got, you, and in fact, I like to draw it out. So if you're, if you're doing this, you'll, you draw out kind of a grid where you can see condition positive versus test positive. And that's the best thing to do. And we do that as a part of our classes. But again, just to reiterate what I said, let's say that I had 10 people come into the clinic and I tagged all 10 as positive. So I, I gave them all a positive Lockman's test, but only two of the 10 were actually true positives. That's an example of a 20% positive predictive value, meaning that 20% were correctly identified to true positives, but 80% were tagged positive, but they were actually false positives. Uh, they, that means they're they're truly negative. So that's what's called a type one error, where you tag them as positive, but they're not actually positive. So in this case, positive predictive value of 20%, that means that you caught 20% and correctly identified them. And then the other 80% of people that were tagged as positive were not correctly tagged. And so that's what's called a type one error. So again, put a different way, that means 80% of positive test results were false positives. So 20% were true positives, and 80% were false positives. That's the definition of the positive predictive value, positive predictive value. Now the negative predictive value, I don't have that mentioned here in the question, but the negative predictive value is the same calculation, meaning you do a special test, you know, pick whatever test you want, and you look at all the people that were tagged negative, and what percentage of those that were tagged negative are actually negative, the true negatives versus the false negatives. So you're looking at the negative predictive value. So in any case, positive predictive value, put simply, is uh, the percentage of individuals identified as positive who truly have the diagnosis, whereas the negative predictive value is the inverse of that. This is different than sensitivity and specificity, and we've talked about that in previous episodes, but sensitivity and specificity are not, not as much focused on test positive. They are more focused on disease positive, meaning that sensitivity is looking at the percentage of people who actually have the disease who are correctly identified. And specificity is the opposite, the inverse, that it's people who truly do not have the disease that were correctly identified. And then that's where you can logically follow the sequence to get to spin and snout. So with a highly sensitive test, if it comes back negative, then you can rule out the condition and a highly specific test, if it's positive, you can rule in the condition. And that's where you get spin and snout with sensitivity and specificity. In this case, we're talking about the, if you were on a grid, if that were the columns, now we're talking about the rows, the positive and negative predictive values. And again, just to reiterate, positive predictive value, that's the percentage of individuals that were identified as positive who are truly positive. <laughs> so of all the people that were tagged positive, how many of those were true positives versus false positives? And that's what you're looking at with the positive predictive value. And then the same thing for the negative predictive value. Excellent. And just of note, as a part of all of our courses, I have a section on the research and evidence-based practice. And that's if I had a nickel for every time someone asked me about a section that was difficult on the test, they would say it's research and evidence-based practice. So I try to go through each of these values, try to put it as simply as possible so that you can apply it on test day. Excellent. All right. So with that, we'll bring today to a conclusion. I hope you have a fabulous day. I want to just express gratitude to you for spending time with me going through practice questions, but also want you to know that what you're doing is not only good, it's a, it is a good fit for you and the rest of your life. This is really a great intersection of your skill and your interest. So just really lean into that. Uh, try, to, try to really use your curiosity and your, your hunger for understanding the concepts to drive your studies. Make it less mundane and, and I guess don't want to be, I'll, I'll use the term boring. You don't want your studies to be boring, Try to lean into that curiosity. Why is it that this is occurring? Why is it that's the case? Why is it that positive predictive value helps you to identify whether or not a positive result is going to give you an actual positive versus a negative? Like lean into that curiosity and you'll find that that yields the best study results. 
So we'll bring it to conclusion, and I hope you have a fabulous day. Keep a grin on your chin. We'll crank fist pumps all around. I'll catch you all in the next one. Thanks, everyone.